So it's been about two weeks now since I've given you an update. I apologize for that. I'll try and make these videos a little more frequent, uh, at least once or twice a week. Hopefully, uh, depends on how often I can get get Wi-Fi to upload these videos. Got some notes here over the past 14 days since day one, since you've heard from me last. Uh, as you've seen in the previous video, day one was just a quick 45 mile ride from Antelope Wells. It was pretty easy, it was all pavement. Uh, all the way back to Hachita to stay with Jeffrey Sharp again. Runs a place called the Bike Ranch. So if you're in Hachita hiking or traveling by bike, look him up, Jeffrey Sharp, Bike Ranch, Hachita. Uh, the following day I rode a few miles past Separ. Uh, ended up staying about two miles north of a ranch. I forget the name of the ranch. I wish I could remember it. Uh, but that was probably about another 40 mile day or so, something like that I want to say. Day three I rode into Silver City. That was kind of fun. Uh, had headwinds pretty much all day until I hit pavement and it was just rolling hills and just headwinds the entire day. Uh, it got so bad at one point I was actually yelling and screaming, cursing in the air pretty much. Uh, it was a little entertaining. In Silver City I stayed at a place called Bike House which is run by a gentleman named Jamie. I forget his last name but he actually raced the Tour Divide back in 2008 uh, and he's been running a place called the Bike House for several years now. Uh, it's another donation run hostel. Uh, check that out if you're ever in Silver City. Uh, the following morning after staying at the bike house, uh, I couldn't find any motivation to, to leave for some reason. Uh, maybe it was the company that I was with, but just could not find the motivation to leave. And at about 2 p.m. I decided to go for a ride around town and just see what happens. I uh, ended up restocking there in town and heading out. only rode about 10 miles north and then uh, stayed at a place called the Continental Divide RV Park, which was $8 for a tent site. Uh, not bad, they had showers, laundry, and all that. Uh, took advantage of the shower, but laundry had already, I had already done in uh, at the bike house in Silver City. Day five, following the short ride out of Silver City, rode 40 miles to a general store just outside of the Gila National Forest, and uh, got there and it was closed for the season. I didn't have much food to last me through the Gila National Forest, so I was kind of in a panic at that point. Uh, there was a water spigot on the side of the store where I refilled my water, uh, hopped onto Google Maps real quick and found out that there was a small general store slash restaurant about 24 miles east of where I was. Uh, and it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, so I hauled ass all the way to that general store, resupplied real quick, and hauled ass another 20, those, well at that point I had to go back 20 miles to get back to the forest, and as soon as I got into the forest, the sun was setting, so I ended up having to set up camp in the dark. Uh, so yeah, quickly set up the tent and just went right to sleep. Uh, right at sunrise, I packed up everything, and started back on the trail. Day six was just a short 12 mile day into a campground called Rocky Canyon. Got notes here. Uh, Rocky Canyon. Uh, probably about three miles into my ride that day, I ran into a gentleman named Guy who's also cycling the divide. Uh, him and I shared a camp spot. He's a great company, awesome guy. Uh, just recently retired and decided to ride the divide. He's from Seattle, Washington, does a lot of mountain biking and that kind of thing in that area. So this is just another another trip for him, I guess. Uh, great having him around. That was fun. Next morning after Guy and I had packed up and everything, uh, we obviously both decided, you know, we'll cycle at our own pace. If we see each other again, we'll see each other. I ended up staying at a place called Black Canyon Campground that was not too far from Rocky Canyon. Uh, there was water there fed by a spring and it was great water. Uh, needed it after two days. Uh, and I actually had the whole campground to myself, which was nice. Uh, got there at about 2 or 3 p.m. Uh, yeah, it was a little wore out. The hills were just starting to wear on me, so I decided to take a break. Day eight, 
I stayed about one mile south of the Beaverhead, uh, what, what is it, Beaverhead Ranger Station. I had heard rumors that if you get there early enough in the morning and they're doing a breakfast for all the rangers that they will invite the cyclists in to have breakfast as well. Uh, unfortunately, when I got there, there's only two guys working there. They were just starting to open up for the season, so they didn't have anything going on really. Uh, half the uh, half the water wells were actually still shut off. They were in the process of still getting those going, but was able to refill there as well with the other half that they had going. Uh, after leaving the Beaverhead Ranger Station, I decided to take an alternate route uh, north of Beaverhead. Took what was called 163. Uh, instead of taking a left out of Beaverhead, you take a right. Uh, that'll take you on to 163. That was a actually pretty fun road. I, I had a downhill for about, I want to say six or seven miles. And it was a blast. It was great. After the last few days I had had, to have that downhill was great. Um, but there towards mid-late afternoon, it started getting really windy. Uh, it was a crosswind, so it wasn't too bad. But still, it, it was it was bad. Uh, by the time I got to another road, uh, I think it's a state road, 52. Right there at 52 and 163, there was what looked to be like an old welding shop that was abandoned. Uh, I ended, there was a short little alcove where I could set up my tent underneath it and just as soon as I set up my tent it started raining and everything so that was kind of perfect timing. Day 10, I got into Pie Town. Pie Town was awesome. Uh, stopped into the gathering place where of course they serve pies and all that. Uh, had biscuits and gravy, some enchiladas, uh, pie of course. And then there was a group of about five people that came in and from what I could gather, they were all staying at the Toaster House. They were all hikers. Uh, the Toaster House is another hostel run by, what is her name? Nita. Nita. Uh, awesome, awesome lady. She's been living in that house since 1981 and has always welcomed hikers into her home. And uh, just a few months ago, very recently, she bought a house outside of town. For herself and is keeping the house in Pie Town open for hikers and cyclists. Uh, it's donation run, so if you ever stay there, throw something in the tip jar. While at the toaster house, there were several people uh, that were concerned about the weather. Uh, for the next three days, there was forecast for rain, and I don't know if you've ever been in New Mexico, but in the rain, those gravel roads just turn into pretty much peanut butter. Anything, you, you step on it, the mud just sticks to your shoes. The more you walk in it, the more mud that sticks to your shoes. It is horrible. Uh, so with rain moving in for the next two days, I decided to take those two days off. And uh, oh, about an hour after I got to the toaster house after eating, guys showed up. Him and I hadn't seen each other since uh, the first day we met up. He showed up at the toaster house about an hour after I did. Uh, he and I both took two days off. I think, now that I think about it, none of the hikers left in those two days. So the house got pretty full. Uh, with rain moving in in this area, you just don't want to be out in it. Uh, so yeah, during those two days off, kind of rested, got, you know, cleaned all the gear, including the bike. Had plenty of pie. Good times. At Toaster House, look it up. It's it's a good time. In the morning of day 13, a uh, guy and I rode out of Pie Town to an alpaca ranch 45 miles from Pie Town. Uh, the hosts there were very welcoming. Uh, apparently, they used to host a lot of hikers, but since then, they've changed the route for the hikers, and now they don't get as much business. Uh, it's called High Country Alpaca Farm, High Country Alpaca Ranch, something like that. Uh, pretty cool place. Day 14 made it into Grants. Got rained on probably only for about three minutes. It was a 63 mile push from the Alpaca Ranch to Grants, uh, which wasn't bad. Uh, it was primarily downhill. Pretty easy. But, uh, and now day 15 today, taking another day off, uh, kind of resting once again, 
long distance travel. I'm not used to it, but uh, slowly getting there. And from here on out, I promise you, I will be making a more conscious effort to get these videos up uploaded. Uh, I'm going to shoot for once or twice a week, but we'll see what happens. So uh, be sure to subscribe. Check out the Patreon page, too. It's uh, pretty cool benefits in there, as well as helping others with disabilities uh, get the prosthetics they need. So, cheers. Later.